a dear friend of the city, to the Continuum of Care of St. Louis, Philip Magnano. You know, as the mayor uh, indicated earlier, I was at the U.S. Conference of Mayors meeting this past weekend in Providence, Rhode Island, and while there were many interesting things that happened there, including a boycott by the federal government of the mayor's meeting, which you can read about, I won't get into it, but the federal government boycotted the mayor's meeting, I don't get it. Um, I spent time, I had, a, a, that offered a little bit more time, and as I said to, uh, as I said to the committees that I spoke to there, uh, I've I was never so proud not to be a federal official because I wasn't boycotting. I was happy to be with mayors because I spent seven years crisscrossing this country meeting with mayors. And I have to say uh, that both at that conference and many times before I had time to spend with your mayor, Mayor Slay. And I can tell you from personal conversations with him, not when he's up speaking publicly, when he's affirming his commitment to what you're committed to, really, you know that what you have is more than a commitment, isn't it? It's a calling, isn't it? It's a calling. Most of you naturally wouldn't have chosen to get into this field, I don't think. I don't think you were attracted by the perks, were you? <laughs> by the jet planes that are readily available to you, by the high salaries, by the, uh, the high life insurance policies and all that. I don't think so. It's a calling. And even if you don't know it, it was a calling. Because it's a calling to the poorest people, and that's something that resonates in everyone's heart, and some of us respond to it and move forward with it. So I want to applaud you for not just the commitment, but the calling that you have. And I can tell you that in my personal conversations with your mayor, he is so proud of what you've done and how you've changed St. Louis, and he's so proud of the commitment that he made to do a 10-year plan, and as you know, he's got quite a great team supporting that, and I think, I know all of you know Bill Seedoff, and I can tell you that there's not a human services director in this country, and I have been in more mayor's offices than any human being ought to be. There's not one that matches the commitment that Bill Seedoff has in the number of times that I've been in touch with Bill about things that were happening here in St. Louis and trying to get the whole thing on track going in the right direction. So you are so blessed to have Bill Seedoff, who actually came back this afternoon to be with you. So give it up for Bill, I think, is what we would say. In our work on homelessness here in this country, both the possible and the impossible are before us. We can be pessimistic and doubt that anything we do can reduce and end homelessness. After all, we had 20 years of that experience. No matter how far we rolled up our sleeves, and in Massachusetts, we rolled them all the way up. We had to cut away our shirts. Because we just felt if we worked hard enough, if our heart was big enough, we could get the job done. And what we had to find out was, no matter how hard we worked, no matter how far we pulled up our sleeves, the problem was getting worse. We can do that, or we can join a conspiracy of true believers who practice the art of the possible. You can visit both the impossible and the possible in our country right now. You can visit it across the world. Those who doubt and are pessimistic and cynical about the prospects of accomplishing our mission, and those who followed what the advice of petite, impossible, impossible, impossible. So let's get to work, and that's exactly what's happened here in St. Louis. But if certainly if there's one thing we've learned in the last 20 years, it's that if good intentions, well-meaning programs, and humanitarian gestures, if they could end homelessness, it would have been history decades ago. Amen? Amen. Because we've done that, haven't we? We've rolled up our sleeves. We've come with true intentionality. We've come with big hearts to this issue. And all of that time, for 20 years, we only saw all of our efforts. The result was, not the result, not causative, but correlative, was that the numbers went up. If our concern is how good we feel when we go home, it was all right. 
if our concern was what the consumer of all of our effort, of all of our planning, all of our partnership, of all of our resources, what their experience was, that we were going home and they were left out on the street or left in shelters or left in transitional programs. We weren't getting the mission accomplished because you heard in that video when people were asked what they wanted, what their goal was, they said, place to live, job. And you know, in my experience talking to thousands of homeless people, not only in this country, but around the world, when you ask them one-on-one -on -one what they want, not what some expert tells us they want, not a sociologist, an anthropologist, whatever, but what they actually want, the consumer asking the consumer what they want. They never ask for a pill, a program, or a protocol, do they? They ask for one thing. It's a place, a place to live. That's what they want. And isn't it about time that the work, our work as providers and the work of government, providers and government, that the expectations of providers and government met the aspirations of homeless people, of the actual consumers of all of our efforts. Well, that's exactly what you're rolling out here in St. Louis as you move toward a housing model. It's not to discredit good intentions. It's just to admit, to get beyond the denial, that our good intentions and well-meaning programs haven't delivered for the consumer. They may have worked for our psychological well-being, but ultimately that's not the critical thing. It's the consumer and the well-being of the consumer that is our goal. The good news here in St. Louis is you are ignited. And from what I've seen today and from my many trips here, I know you're all on fire to accomplish the mission. Maybe to be the first city in our country to say, it's done, come and visit our shelter museums. Come and see what we've done. Have your children come and see what the future is about. We're going to show what the future is about here in St. Louis. Be ignited or be gone. Thank you.